the yeah, I think you can hear me now. Back on the Sports Mag Zone, we're talking track and field to open this Friday edition of the show. And the Diamond League meet from Brussels, Belgium today, the penultimate one of the season. So four Caribbean winners, all of them from Jamaica. We start with the women's 100 meters, won by Elaine Thompson here. Remember, 10.92 in Switzerland, 10.84 today, a season's best for Natasha Morrison, finishing in second, her Jamaican compatriot. Over 200 meters, Sharika Jackson was going for the world record and she won that event 21.48, a Diamond League record for Sharika Jackson. She also brought the meet record of 21.64, which was set by Merlin Joyce Hot. Otti in 1991. So a pretty special performance from Sharika Jackson over 200 meters. The Bohemian Anthony Xtron finishing in second position at 22.31 seconds. In the men's 400 meters, Rasheed McDonald got victory 44.84 seconds, his winning time. And then in the women's triple jump, Shanika Ricketts becoming the second Jamaican to go beyond the 15 meter mark with a 15 -0. Zero one effort to win that event. No Yulimar Rojas in Brussels today. So four Caribbean winners there. Tia Lafon finished third in the women's triple jump with 14.03 meters. Uh, well, Leighton Levy, our in-house analyst, joins us as we discuss what happened today in Brussels. And Leighton, I'm going to begin with the women's 200 meters and Sharika Jackson's performance at 21.48 effort. She was chasing the world record. In fact, there were three athletes who I think um, had hopes of threatening world records today. Jackson being one of them. It didn't happen. Mondo Duplantis in the men's pole vault. He got over six, then it didn't happen. And Jakob Inga Britson in the men's 2,000 meters, really run 2,000 meters, and he did break the world record. They don't even really refer to it as world record. It's a world best. Um, but we're talking about Sharika Jackson not getting the world record, but she got a Diamond League record and a meeting record Leighton. Fantastic performance. Um, what else can you say? Four of the six fastest times in history, and all of them run without an appreciatively helping wind. Huh? 0 0.2 today, and that was what we saw in Budapest was 0 0.1, her 21.45, 0 0.6. When you go back and look at the history of it, the world record of 21.34 set in 1988 was run with an aiding wind of 1.3 meters per second. And Sherika Jackson had that wind in any of two of those three races, she, the world record would have been hers. So, I mean, you can't complain, fantastic performance, and the, the reality is that when you look at the races in their entirety, they are not as good as she could have run. So I suspect that tweaking a little few things here and there, you know, the, the, the curve, maybe she needs to hug the line a little bit more. The last 50 meters today, at first glance, I need to look back at it, probably wasn't as good as she wanted it to be. So when you look at the overall performance, though, what can you say? 2148, I mean, notwithstanding a brand new track, that has to be, has to be taken into consideration as well. But the fact is that you have to run the time, and she did it today again. Three times on a 21.5, no other athlete has ever done that before. 2141, 2145, 2148, in less than ideal conditions in terms of the, the environmental conditions. I mean, what else can I mean? It's, it's just fantastic from the young Jamaican, and of course, looking forward to see what she does in in Eugene and of course looking forward to the Olympics next year where unless something extraordinary happens she's the gold medalist at the Olympic Games in Paris mm. next year. It's track and field and maybe you shouldn't look that far no, ahead. No, no, I said unless something <laughs> extraordinary happens. You know? Which has been known to happen in this sport of Absolutely. track and field. Um, do you suspect that she is putting together a resume that puts her well a little bit more than in the conversation now as the greatest half-lap sprinter of all time on the women's side, despite the fact that she doesn't have the world record. And if she is not there yet as the greatest half-lap runner on the female side, what does she have to do to get there? Win the Olympic title next year. If she does that, I think she establishes herself as the greatest. Why? Mm. Because she has the times and she has the titles to back it up, including the prestige of the Olympic title. If she breaks the world record, then the argument is over completely. 
when you look at, and it, and it goes beyond just the 200, in terms of combination sprinters, 1, 2, and 4, 10, 65, 21, 41, and 49, 47, or 40, 49, yes. 47, sorry. Mm -hmm. It puts her only second to Marita Koch of Germany, who has run 1071, 21, I don't know what the times were, but the reality is... high, though. It goes yeah, high. But she's only four points behind uh, in terms of the overall standing, 3,809 to 3,805, which makes Sharika Jackson actively the best combination sprinter right now. Mm. Overall, she's just behind Cook, but the reality is mm. that by the time she leaves Paris next year, as, again, assuming that everything goes according to plan, mm. she's going to be the greatest female combination sprinter of all time. But in terms of the 200 meters, mm. if she wins in Paris next year, mm. I don't think you can debate it. The experts say all the time, Leighton, that athletes shouldn't chase world records in the way that Sherry could chase the record today because she announced this week that, that she, she, wanted, yeah. she was chasing the record. And um, a lot of experts don't feel that's a good thing to do, apart from putting unnecessary pressure on yourself to, to deliver it can result in you tightening because you want it so so badly. Do you think she should have announced publicly that she was going for the record? No problem with it going inwardly to know that that's what you're aiming for, but to tell the world that you're going for the record tomorrow. Do you think that's something she should not have done? or It depends on the athlete, I think. Mm -hmm. For Sharika right now, she's a, her level of confidence rare. I think yeah. she can boldly say, I want to go for the world record. Because mm -hmm. it's there. It's, the, it's, the, yes. it's what she, she's been striving for for the last couple of seasons. Mm -hmm. and, and look, if she welcomes the pressure and is able to function under it, which we saw today, she said she was going for the record and still run 21.48. Mm -hmm. Yes, it wasn't close enough to the record. But to have the bravado to say, I want to go for the record, I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything wrong in saying, yes. I want to do it. Yeah. And if she falls short, yeah. well, no, we know that that's her ambition. Mm -hmm. So eventually she gets it. We knew she was always going to chase it. So I don't know. I don't think, I think it depends on the athlete. I think for Sherika, I think it's fine. For, no other, athletes, no for other athletes, it might, have, might be a problem with the, ex the expectation of the pressure. Mm -hmm. But I think for Sherika, where, where she's at now, yeah. I believe that is fine. Well, you've already said you'd like to watch the race again to see if there was anything in the race that you saw. Mm -hmm. Ricardo, I saw the race once, but from what I saw, I'd like to see it again, like, like Leighton just said. I thought she straightened a little too quickly coming out of the blocks. When she came out of the blocks, um, I thought she straightened a little too quickly, but I would want to see I, the I, race. I, I think there was a mistake in that first 30 somewhere. Yes, I, 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 I saw I, something similar to what you, you saw, saw, Lance. Yes. I'm not 100% yeah, sure I'd like to of... See what happened and i would love to see it again like both of you but i am agreeing with you there that there, there was something there was a little glitch that yeah. wasn't as smooth yes. as it usually is one factor though that truck in brussels the curve is wider than the traditional two or what you see so maybe that's a reason why she straightened out a little bit more quickly because mm -hmm. the curve is a lot tighter on most other trucks yes, yes. that truck the, the curve is a lot wider mm -hmm. not a lot but it's wider yes. so i think that may be a factor maybe that's something that they were working on when she said she was working on something that last year she ran 21.8 mm -hmm. so i don't know look to, to break a world record you're going to need to get everything going right all at the same time and it doesn't very especially often. one of flojo's world records yeah mm -hmm. which you know has their own mm -hmm. asterisk about them anyway the, the reality is that i think it's within reach of, of for sharika jackson and i think if the if the right conditions and the right execution i think she'll get it mm -hmm. yeah let's talk about elaine thompson here and her 1084 today wait. on the back of 1092 in switzerland listen for the last two seasons um elaine thompson here has floundered compared to where she was in 2021. Huh? Mm. What we've seen in the last three races especially, is a significant indicator that she's on track to back to being close to where she was in 2021. I'm not saying she's going to get back to 1054. That's a long way away. The fact is, however, when you look at what the race is, I watched it three times. <laughs> <laughs> Her start was better. Her, her drive phase was better, her transition was better, and her cadence, as I mentioned before, when Elaine is at, at peak performance levels, her legs turn at a level like you see from Roadrunner or, or Bugs Bunny or something on, <laughs> on, on Warner Brothers. Today I saw something close to that, especially after she got to 60. 
her legs were turning like ridiculously fast. Not as fast as we, we used to see yes, from yes, her, yes. but she's beginning to look like the Lane Thompson hero that we've seen in 2020, 2021, where she was superior to everybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. And if, if Shaniki Osborne can get her back close to that, I don't care what happens in Paris next year, if she gets back to that level, there's nobody beating her. Because we've seen the signs. C c careful of those absolutes. Yeah, there's, there's, and it's an absolute. And, I, and look, but what I'm seeing today tells me that she's moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And it tells me that that pivot that she's made from what has happened in the last two seasons is working out gloriously well for her. Because 1080, 1084 with zero wind, if that was a one meter per second, that's 1077 or 1075, depending on you know, the other environmental factors like altitude, which I don't know what the altitude is in, in, in Brussels. But the reality is that we're seeing an alien Thompson in these last three races that looks close to the one that we saw back in 2021. And that's a very good sign for her and her coaching staff. Yeah, I, I would just stay away from the absolutes, but the, the point I, <laughs> I wanted like to make, the, the point I wanted to make was how happy she looks. And I've seen that from the World Championships, actually, in, in all the videos and pictures that I saw in the build-up to Budapest when she was there training and subsequent to Budapest, she looks at peace. Yeah, because now she's, she's back to being Elaine. Or close to it. Or close to it. Look, when you're not, when you know you're capable of, you play tennis. Yes. Um, I don't know how well you play, but let's assume that you're really good. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so here's the thing. If you're playing, when you're playing your best tennis, you feel it, right? It's, it's a feeling. You know you're going to hit that forehand. You know you're going, to, you're going to cover that backhand properly. You know you're going to cover the net the way you want to. When you're not firing on all those cylinders, it's frustrating for you. So you're, you're not clicking and you're wondering what's happening. You're not, it's not happening for you. But what we've seen from Italy in the last, since the World Championships, right, that 9-9 leg that everybody was questioning whether or not it's legitimate or not. Yeah. The fact is that she's beginning to feel like herself again. And that's a po very positive feeling. You're like, it's like, okay, I'm getting there. I'm, mm. I'm happening again. And um, she, I, I'm sure she can't wait to get into the postseason to, mm. to get working again. Yeah, and before Lance even comes in, I just want to make a quick point that the 9-9 leg in Budapest was a quality leg, and I will not take that away from Elaine, but I also want to make the point that there were some women who were clocking 9-6 um, on that same second leg. So there was still um, a gap between Elaine and the very best sprinters in the world at the World Championships. Mm. I just wanted to make that point and mm. leave it there. That's a good point to make because everything is in context. And yes. It's relative to what, but coming from where she's been coming from, 11.06 from a block start at the, at the National Championships in the final to running a relay league, there's a big difference because you're coming from zero mm -hmm. from the blocks. Mm -hmm. When you're after a running start, it, the, the dynamic is completely different. Mm -hmm. So that's also to be considered as yeah. well. Um, when she announced her coaching adjustment setup, she did say Shaniki Osborne's coaching stint with her was temporary or experimental. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we are awaiting the confirmation from her now, but I don't think it would be too long for us to hear that this is going to be it. Well, <laughs> look, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Huh? And I think what we've seen since Shaniki Osborne has taken over her program that she's continuously improved. It's not like she's doing this. Yeah. You know, she's doing this, yes. which tells me that it should be an easy decision at the end of the season when they sit down to discuss the future, that Shaniki Osborne has to be a part of the coaching setup. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that we do know about Shaniki Osborne, she has the experience of coaching with Elaine before at MVP. Yes. She is a meticulous coach. Yes. And we've seen her have success with other athletes. So this is not new to her because she's used to being in an environment with elite athletes. So handling somebody like Elaine thompson Hera should be relatively comfortable for her in terms of mm. marshalling her program and getting her cycles right mm. so that she's able to peak at the right times mm. and get the performances she, that she's looking she for. She was the coach that spotted Tajay Gale, wasn't she? Yes, yeah. she was. Mm. She, she spotted Tajay Gale while he was at Papine, Papine where school. she coached, and she, she yes. also coached Tiffany James, James right? yes. um, and who Marco. was Papine's first ever yeah. um, 
gold Global medalist yes, at champs yes, yes. and she still coaches well she is back coaching Candice McLeod mm -hmm. um, from what I understand and Candice has been doing well and importantly this situation is not dissimilar to Shelley and Fraser Price's situation yes. when she left With MVP Ronaldo Walcott. and went to Ronaldo Walcott who yes. you could look at as an understudy of the great Stephen Francis this young woman Shaniki Osborne you can also consider as an understudy of the the great um, Stephen Francis um, lately you're smiling does no. that have anything to no, can sorry. you share you you looked at a message I, on your I phone can't share and it. you you can't then you shouldn't be checking it live on air if you can't I'm share sorry. it <laughs> Rasheen McDonald and uh, um, Shanika Ricketts won today can you compose yourself and talk about the quality of their performances I'm really happy for Shaniki um, for Shania, Shanika Ricketts because she's been She's been hankering for that 15 meter jump for the longest while. Yes. So to see her get it today was cathartic for me, actually, because I Ooh, know. Wow. No, because I know how hard she's been working to get that middle phase right. Mm -hmm. And I think today she got most of it right. Mm -hmm. And I hope this is a breakthrough for her, not just physically, but mm -hmm. mentally as well. Now that she's broken through that 15 meter mm -hmm. bar, I know it becomes, hopefully, it becomes more consistent for her. And I think what we saw today from her yeah. is a sign that there is no slowing down for her in terms of her progress. Yeah. And kudos to her coach, um, Kerry Lee Ricketts, as well. For Rasheed McDonald, I think part of this has probably been his best season in the front of the 400. The consistency that we've seen from him all year, peaking out at 44-03, 44-84 today. I think there's only one individual, or two individual races that he's run this year that he's run over 45 seconds, which is a good sign for him. And of course... Well, since definitely since June. Yeah, since June, yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're looking forward to seeing what the off season means for him because yeah. this is a nice base for him to build off yeah. Yeah. yeah i want i want to ask ricardo about his take on these performances because he did say last week that he doesn't put a lot of worth on post championship performances mm. well before <laughs> before, I, before i respond to that i just wanted to make the point that um just a quick correction tlf one actually had 1449 and not 1403 yes um but to answer your question, Lance, yes. I did say when I made the point that I don't put a lot of stress on post-championship performances, yeah. but at the same time, I felt that this post-championship season was extremely important for someone like Elaine Thompson Hero because yeah. what she When well, you made that point, but so I'm just asking about Shanika Ricketts and Rasheen McDonald and... Company. Well, again, so, so for... Because I understood Shanika, the point yeah. that you made about Elaine, and it's well, it's well made. It's a yeah. well made point. So for Shanika Ricketts, um, even for Elaine Thompson Hira, it's about building confidence. It's mm -hmm. about proving to yourself that these are things that yes. you can do. For Shanika Ricketts, finally getting over 15 meters, that's massive. It doesn't matter at what point of the season that mm -hmm. she does that. The fact that she can get over that hurdle sets her up well for next year. Similar situation to Elaine thompson Hira. It brings back a little bit of her confidence moving into next year. But yeah. ultimately, yeah. um, Leighton and Lance, Next year is a completely different, different year. year. Yep. Yeah. And, Start from zero. And the athletes who have run even faster or have delivered better jumps um, for the duration of 2023 will be coming even harder next year. Yes, and, yes. And, and ultimately, that, it, what, that is what it comes yeah, down to. Yeah, but there's a thing that I like, a phrase I like to use called progress over perfection. Huh? Yeah. And I think when you look at, for example, let's take Elaine. Yes. Elaine's ceiling is 15 seconds by Elaine's, the way. Elaine's ceiling is higher than everybody else in the world. 1054. Nobody else has been there. So, yeah. you know, her ceiling is so high yeah. that even a 1084 performance today is not close to her best. So if you can get back to that level, given the confidence that she now has, mm -hmm. makes her very dangerous for next year. Yeah. 15 I, seconds. I, I love how you say very dangerous yes. and not unbeatable yeah. um, because you've been on that absolute <laughs> I know, but line. You know, I'm, very, I'm just happy for her. For, for, for today's show. Yeah. Leave it there, Leighton. We have to end the segment there. We go to a break. I'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone. <laughs>